Hi, this is Scott Wyden Kivowitz, and today I want to uh, show you a critique. Uh, I have a newsletter that I send out on a monthly basis to anyone who subscribes uh, through my website. Now, there's also people who buy my presets or ebooks, etc. And I always ask the these photographers who sign up to send me a photo to critique. And every once in a while, I get one that I think is definitely worth sharing. Um, not because it's a bad photo, but because um, just to show that there's certain things that I would do very differently. And this is because sometimes the purist in me comes out and uh, my critiques could be stronger than, than otherwise. Now, this is a great example because this photo is fantastic. This photo is one that I would see uh, in a magazine for, let's say, a J. Crew or a Gap or something like that that's a summery um, type of clothing or bathing suit or cover-up or whatever and in the catalog or on their TV, sh TV uh, advertisements, etc. This is something that I would see there. So compliments to the photographer. Um, and by the way, I'm not going to tell you who it is. That is uh, one of the reasons for this is to keep it um, private. So um, there is something that I do not like. There are two things really that I do not like in this photo. Okay, one being up here, well first of all, the, the whole color tint, for me, for my personal liking, the color tint is a little bit too warm. Um, it does work, and this is definitely, again, this is a J. Crew Gap style ad, um, so, you know, it works. But for me, my personal taste, it's too warm. The, the sky here is just too unrealistic, it's not blue, it's more toward the turquoise type color, which again is okay, but for me, I like blue skies because that's the purest in me. Also, the sun flare is a little bit, it stands out a little bit too much for my personal taste, but again, that's okay. So I asked the photographer to send me the original uh, JPEG, so this is a JPEG, not a RAW, which means I have a lot less control, but it also means that I can process this faster for the video. Um, so I cannot bring back the sky because it is washed out. What I probably would do is one, I would probably leave the sky washed out, or more specifically, I would probably use software like On One Software to mask it out and bring in uh, different clouds. But before I do that, uh, I want to go through and do some basic processing to the actual photo itself. And the way we're going to do this is, first, we're going to adjust some of the, let me actually close this. We are going to adjust some of the basics right here. So I always start with the tone curve. So I go down over here in Lightroom and I will bump it up to medium contrast. That's a good starting point for me. And I find that the curve is just enough I could go more, but in the JPEG, it's going to start getting a little bit too contrasty, so uh, I'm going to leave it on medium. The next thing I will do is go to the whites, and I'll usually hold the Alt option so that I can see the whites, what's blown out. Now, as you can see, there's a lot that just won't be uh, recoverable because it's just completely washed out. Um, it's just, just a washed out sky, and that that's okay. It's okay. Um, and especially since we're going to be bringing this into all-in software, it's definitely okay. Next I would think I would do the same thing with the blacks, hold alt, and drag it up and down until I see just a little bit of clipping. And there we go. So now up here, some of the black detail has no detail. And then I will go to the highlights and shadows. Now I could bring this down to bring back some blue, but I'm actually going to bring it up to more wash out that sky so that I can bring it into Onward Software and easily put in the clouds. And then I will adjust the shadows a little bit to bring that where I want to. And then of course, some of the contrast to bring that back. Since I'm adjusting the, the highlights and shadows, the contrast gets a little wacky. Now, you can see here there's a lot of clipping going on. And again, that's fine, perfectly fine because we're going to remove the sky. Um, so you can see here the, the sun flare is still harsh, but it actually works really well in this photo. I mean, it was great composition by the photographer. The only thing I probably would have changed is um, the foot area. I would probably have step, taken a step back or zoomed out a little bit if need be, whatever the lens was that was being used. Um, and that way I, I have the entire foot, but it, it, you know, again, it, it's not, not the end of the world. It, it, it's still a beautiful photo. Now, 
I actually like mixed lighting. So if this was me, I probably would have done a little bit of gelling on my studio light, whatever I was using, to make sure that the um, everything was blue or cooler than what was lit being the person. So you can actually replicate this a little bit by using the brush tool in Lightroom. It could also be used using the radial as well if you wanted to. I can actually show you that first. So let's say we go to the radial instead and we actually just go like this, create the radial and then not do that with the exposure but actually cool it down and you can see that everything outside the radial is getting cool and everything inside the radial is actually staying warm. We can make that tighter and more narrow so that it's really just her. Now if this was me doing it with the original raw file I would probably do it with the brush uh, afterwards and if I didn't do it with the lighting if I didn't do it, do it you know during the actual shooting in camera I would use this the brush tool for more uh, to be more precise on it so that the steps over here can still be cool and in between the legs and over here on the steps can still be cool but this is just so you get the idea I would cool it down just a little and let's actually go back and warm it up slightly because it's a little bit too cool but to me there we go that adds a little bit more dynamic to it than just overall tone the entire photo. So here's the before and here's the after, before, after, before, after, before, after. Okay, so let's say we're happy with this. The next thing I would do is I would bring it into On One Software. So uh, we'd right click for me, I'd go to Edit In in Perfect Photo Suite 7, uh, edit the copy with adjustments, and hit the edit. It'll take a little bit for this to open, but what it's going to do is going to open in Perfect Layers. Okay. The next thing I want to do is actually jump over to Perfect Mask and we're going to actually mask out the sky in this photo. So I'm going to sort of just do this, highlight what I want to be removed, and it should, if we're, if we're lucky, just get rid of that sky completely. Okay, there we go. It got rid of almost all of it. It did remove her hand a little bit, but we can bring that back. So let's actually bring that back. We just selected the um, the brush here, the brush tool. We're going to go to Paint In, and just for to be more precise and not let it guess, we're going to um, actually. Sorry, I want to brush Paint In. Why is that not going? There we go. So we're going to bring that back just a little. Okay. So you can see why it removed it. It was because it was just it blown out. But it it wouldn't have worked so well. I mean, it could work, I guess, but. Um, I'd rather just have a little bit more control since we're putting in the sky. See, I just clipped her head, so let's actually put that back a little bit. Paint in. Alright. So, again, I'm not going to be too precise because this is just to give you my, my thoughts, but uh, I want to make sure that it doesn't look silly with cut off heads and cut off. Um, hands. Now, yes, her hand is cut off just naturally because of that, but so you get the idea. So now this is set, this is good to go. We're going to hit apply and it's going to bring it back to perfect layers. Um, and you can see here, here's the perfect layers with the mask. And then what we're going to do is we're actually going to add a new layer and the new layer is going to be a sky. So to add the clouds, what we're going to do is we're actually going to go to file and add layers from file and I'm going to choose bright blue clouds okay this is just a clouds photo um, now if, if you there's another way to do this in perfect effects without using perfect mask where you just add clouds as an effect and then mask it away where you don't want it and I might show you that as well but this is a um, this is one way that you can do it using the masking and using layers now this is a very blue sky Okay, so when I drag this layer up over the sky so the mask is exposed, you'll see that it doesn't really match so well. So watch to watch this. And you're gonna see something else as well. So here it is now, the photo masked. You can see that the you know the lack of precision where I could have you know gotten even better 
and you can see here I missed a little bit on the head and over here, which is all fine because this is just for a demo. Um, now, this is so harsh that it just actually ruins the photo. So what I would probably do in this situation is click back to this layer, bring it down so it's just enough that you see the tint of blue in the photo and that's it. So now, if I was to save this, the photo will be complete. Yes, it, it'll be a little choppy because of the, of the masking, but, but um, you'll, you, you'll see that the blue is a, is a lot more subtle and it works a lot better for, uh, than, than just the empty sky. So we're gonna go back here and give it a little bit to load. And you can see that it's very subtle, very, very subtle, but it has a tint of blue. And of course, you can see the choppiness. Here it is with white, here it is with the blue. Just enough to bring something back, but not enough to really distract um, from it. So again, and you can make this denser if you want more blue or whatnot. And of course, you can edit the file, you can choose different clouds, etc. So that's an advantage of that. But now I wanna show you the same thing doing it in perfect effects. Oops, sorry, went over too far. So now what we're gonna do is go back to here and we're gonna to go to edit in perfect photo suite and we're gonna open another uh, edit. And here we are back in perfect layers. This is the base one without the sky masking that I just did. And we're gonna go right to perfect effects. So now we're in perfect effects and what I'm going to do is up here, you see I selected uh, dark, I, I did a search for clouds and here's dark clouds. So I'm gonna choose that one and see how um, powerful it is already covering the entire photo. I'm actually going to uh, rotate it to I think one one rotation because I think I like that those that cloud pattern better and drop the strength down so it's a little bit more subtle like that uh, maybe even a little less because it's still a little unnatural that's a little bit more natural and then what I can do is actually with precision actually grab the, the uh, brush and the perfect brush make the uh, the brush size a little smaller and then brush away where I do not need the clouds. First I would start with the edges and you can see here I'll turn on the masking. I will start with the edges, get all that. The perfect brush is extremely powerful to get right on the edge. I like it a lot better than the, than the brush inside of the masking. Um, it's only a matter of time before Onward Software puts that into the masking. Um, as well and you can see I'm getting very precise without too much effort I can even do here on the bench this is going to be a little bit tougher because um, there is no detail in between I will probably stop here where her hand is maybe I'll keep going just a little just for the heck of it and I'll get the railing here and then I can even get here on the on like the rock edge I always start with the edges because once the edges are done, I can uncheck perfect brush, which then will make it faster to do my brushing. Now I'll remove all of the clouds from everywhere else in the photo except the sky. And that did not take much time. Go back to after. And here is the before. I mean, here's the after, here's the before. Go back after, before, after. Now that looks a lot more natural than what I did before using the different layers in uh, with the mask and the perfect layers. It looks more natural. And again, I could even bring it, scale it down even more if I wanted to. If I wanted to, I can change the, uh, the sky, the actual clouds. I can change the pattern of the clouds. So that's number three. Here's number two. Let's actually bring that up so you can see that better. So that's like a really dark one in here. Actually, this is really good because it shows me the edges that I missed, um, which is nice. Here's four. That actually works pretty well too, but I'd bring that one down. So I'd probably bring that down to about there. And that actually looks very realistic, except for right here, which I would need to work in a little bit more. But this to me is what I would do with this photo. It's more natural. Um, the colors are more natural than the uh, really warm J. Crew style advertisement, which I mentioned before. But again, the photo is fantastic. I'm gonna hit apply so you can see the before and after. This is what I would do more if it was if this was my photo. Uh, this is what I would do if it was my photo uh, instead of what you're about to see. Let's quit out of this. 
And let's actually do it before or after of these two. I'm going to compare these. And here's the before and after. So the one on the right is the original from the photographer, the original that um, was sent for me to critique. And again, beautiful photo, just a little, the colors are too off for me, a little bit too warm for my personal liking, but it is a beautiful shot. I love it. Um, on the left is what I would do if this was my photo. I would cool down the rocks a little bit, cool down the outside of n not the subject, and then w keep the subject itself, um, you know, the right white balance lit, you know, use that way. I would probably have done this in camera versus doing it in post processing, but that's okay. And then I, instead of using that um, uh, sort of turquoise ish aqua blue um, for the sky, I actually used real clouds that um, are from Onward Software's suite and just threw that, threw that in there with some masking and I, I like how it came out um, but again both are really awesome so thank you to the photographer for sending it uh, for me to critique I hope that um, you are actually learning something from this uh, of you know what other options are out there than, than the processing that you used and for anyone else that's watching I hope you learned as well and thank you